Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you to another episode of Light It Up. I am your host, Dr. Regina Mashira, and today I have a very special guest uh, joining me for today's episode. Um, very dear friend of mine that I've known for probably well over 25 years, so I think I'm dating us. <laughs> but um, my guest today is Nicole Brookins, who is the founder of a non-for-profit organization called Plan for Success. Welcome to Light It Up, Nicole. Thank you for having me, Agina. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to take this time to talk to you because I've been able to watch you. You know, we've known each other for so long and you formed an, an organization, a nonprofit organization um, some years ago. And I've been able to watch the impact that you've made. Um, so I wanted other people to hear about Plan for Success and learn about what it is that your organization does and how you've been able to make an impact on the lives of our youth um, and also their families as well. So before we get into you know, all of the details and all of the great things that Plan for Success has accomplished, why don't you tell us who is Nicole Brookins? Um, great question. <laughs> Nicole Brookins is a descendant of very brave women who um, were tra trailblazers in the community. So I would have to start with my grandmother, my maternal grandmother, who was a precinct captain who did block club parties and cleanup drives to my paternal grandmother, who was a very active community church member and um, the boss of the deacon, the um, mother's board. Um, I would also like to talk about my aunt Judy I. Mitchell Davis, Judge Judy I. Mitchell Davis, who was a trailblazer in helping our youth as a circuit court judge. Um, we also have my aunt Edna, who served the west side of Chicago with her famous biscuits and soul food and worked with ex-convicts to give them an opportunity to enter the workforce and back into society in a positive way. Um, there's my mother who taught me how to start a conversation with almost anybody you meet um, anywhere. Um, we have my Aunt Barbara, who was the boss of my family. And each one of them had a teaching and training component in who they were and what they taught me. So I am a descendant of very great, brave African-American queens who already set the bar high for me to follow. Awesome. Awesome. And um, I mean, and aside from that, because obviously that's great, you're also a wife, a mother. A, a wife, <laughs> a mother. Yes. In addition to that, I am a wife. I have been married um, since 1998. So, you know, after so long, you forget how to count. Oh, I've been married, whatever. But Right. Married since 1998. I have two um, children, Christian, who is a third year at Grinnell College, and Kaylin, who is a senior at home with Flossmoor High School. Yes. And I'm a youth advocate. And, and that's what I think um, has brought us to this medium today to talk about Plan for Success, because what I remember um, want to go back to when actually when Christian was a baby, I think, probably. <laughs> but I just remember um, you talking about, you know, trying to find the right neighborhood, right community, you know, because even when he was a baby, you know, you were thinking about his education and making sure that he had access to quality education. And so, what I recall seeing is someone who was willing to make the sacrifices, 
you know, for their children to make sure that they um, had access. And we, we know that that's very, very important because in our community, oftentimes we don't have access. And as a result, we're not at the same level as others, you know, in terms of our ability to compete. So that is the one thing that I think stood out for me um, about you that early on, that that was something that you made sure that you, you did. And um, you weren't selfish with the information that you were able to obtain, always trying to help others. Um, which speaks to who you are as a person and your spirit and just, you know, how you're always sharing information with other people. So tell me, why did you um, start Plan for Success? Why not just keep all of the information that you were able to gather, you know, to help support your own children? Um, but why did you formulate Plan for Success? So um, one thing I had an opportunity to work with kids from all socioeconomic levels. So I grew up in North Lawndale, which is very, which is a very urban neighborhood. And then I raised my kids in Homewood Flossmoor. Um, and then always having the ability to navigate different environments. My son had an opportunity, a door open with me working on him, having access, access to resources for him to go to University of Chicago. So I was able to penetrate that environment and make a difference and get him through high school there. Um, so I, interestingly enough, I met a parent at one of the events and I was contemplating starting a nonprofit because I noticed my son had opportunities, but there were so many others who don't even get to the door, right? Um, and I also had a younger cousin who was just shot um, while sitting in a car with his girlfriend. And my son um, had three cousins shot actually during his time in high school. So I'm talking to this parent, unbeknownst to myself that he is an attorney with D.L. Piper, one of the biggest law firms, and he worked in social service things on the side or whatever. And he said, so Nicole, what's next? And I said, you know, I've been contemplating, and I told him what I just said to you, but we're standing in his kitchen, and the story got so real that I began to cry. He began to cry. He gave me his card, I called him and we set up plan for success from there. Um, but you always have to be ready. When opportunity presented itself, I had already had a mission, a logo. I was really in motion of thinking about what are some of the limitations that exist with nonprofits and how would I be different? And how would I structure plan for success to impact more kids and not just our high achieving kids. Um, you had supports with working with kids with University of Chicago where they had access to any resource they wanted or needed. Then you had students who were in, um, you know, the system mm -hmm. where they had access to some programming and resources and it left out a whole demographic of people and young people that still need help. Mm -hmm. So it took off from there. So, and with Plan for Success, tell me what is the mission of Plan for Success, the mission and the vision? Um, Plan for Success is a premier resource organization. We help teens and college students in the areas of career development, um, college prep, and financial literacy. Our focus is to allow kids to become bigger contributors to society as they participate to learn how to take action and network, which are the keys to success and sometimes what holds us back in underserved communities. Um, we want to do better, be better, and change the narratives for generations to come. Awesome. And I know with a uh, plan for success, 
you have, so you've been in existence since uh, 2016, right? 2016. And just over that period of time, you've, your organization has impacted what? 500 students. Yes. Um, 500 students. Um, we have had the opportunity to work with probably just a little over 500 students. We have, when we started uh, Plan for Success, we had these workshops and we had modules that we would do quarterly that we turned into a one day conference. And those resources and services included resume writing, um, learning about the stock market, LinkedIn pages. We actually have practical solutions and resources that are hands on, not lecture you, give you the information, and then you go home and put the folder under your desk. Mm -hmm. Every workshop you come to, you're doing something with follow-up supports, as well as communication, bi-weekly, and other supports to resources. Um, how is Plan for Success structured? Because I know it's not a one-woman show, but how's, how's the organization structured? Um, so we do have a board of directors. Um, our board of directors are amazing women. Um, and I'll just, you know, shout them out right now. Janie Davis, um, who is a founding board member and also our vice president. We have Natalie Williams as our strategic um, planner. Um, we have Monica Gordon who works with us on fundraising. We have Lolita McKinney, who's our treasurer, and she helps with some of our team projects and other financial things that we need done to keep our organization afloat. Um, and then we have Dr. Katari Coleman, who is the lead of our college students, doing an amazing job um, helping them matriculate through college. Awesome, awesome. So it sounds like you have a really great team who mm -hmm. have a um, wealth of knowledge and resources that they can bring to the table. And I'm sure that's important when you're establishing a nonprofit organization. Absolutely. We have four cohorts. I recognize the need of groups working together to reach a common goal for student success. So Plan for Success is structured a little different than normal um, nonprofits. So we have four cohorts. Um, they include a parent cohort, a teen cohort, a college um, cohort, and then one with nonprofit, other nonprofit organizations. So in our parent cohort, we share resources for them and their children. A lot of parents know about resources or are affiliated with other organizations. They share those resources, so we all kind of have a pool of resources that we share amongst one another. Um, and there are groups or people like Lavelle Hall, who does Mom Logics. I know during the pandemic, they had a lot of webinars that supported moms, and a lot of our parents participated. Um, in our teen cohort, um, which is where this journey started with our teens, um, we developed the workshops for them, resume writing, a brand called you, Game of Life, um, the stock market, purchasing power, all of these things that they need to succeed and giving them opportunities to have hands-on practical experiences. And as I said earlier, those workshops turned into a one-day conference that we do. Um, and we had the honor of having that through in-kind space from University of Illinois, Chicago, in 2019 and with supports of them supporting us in the future. Then we have our college cohort. Um, a lot of our teens matriculated into um, college, so we had to, we identified the need to provide additional supports beyond high school. So um, some of the things that we do with our, high, our college students, we have a monthly newsletter. Um, a bi-monthly newsletter where we share resources, scholarships, internships, coping mechanism, um, self-care, mental health. Um, we have a yearly holiday gathering. 
one of the things that I'm most proud of um, with our college students is they give back. Um, and then we have the nonprofit network in which we work with other nonprofits. Right now we have about 25 in our group and how that works, um, we worked with Girls for Science. They had 150 girls in their summer program and they're a science organization. So they reached out and we decided to do our brand called You workshop with their 150 girls to help develop them beyond science on a more personal level. And it was so much fun and the girls learned a lot and they really enjoyed the sessions. And it was a good test for our program too because we work with three different sets of kids from different areas. Um, kids came from St. Francis, Malcolm X, and Olive Harvey. So it was good to see that we had the same effect for all of them and it was really successful. Or working with kids on the block, kids off the block. We have um, teens and college students that volunteer for their Thanksgiving program and then they in turn invited us to um, participate in their uh, Summer in the Streets program where we did two community events um, in our own communities to support um, nonviolence in the streets. So it sounds like, I mean, it's more, it sounds like more of a holistic approach. So it's more than just the educational or active. Absolutely. You know, definitely touching upon the life skills, but it also instilling in the youth that you are touching the importance of giving back and working um, Absolutely. in the community, you know, having um, a, a sense of community, which I think is very, very um, important. Um, how do you, so when you started Plan for Success, did you envision that you were, you know, going to touch as many lives as you have thus far and have all of these different components? I know, obviously, when you structured it, you know, you had something in mind, but mm -hmm. how has it grown in comparison to the way you initially envisioned? Um, so... You know, there are days where I have happy tears because, you know, when I started, I said, I'm just going to put my head down, help as many kids as I can. And to see something come together and something that's organized, something that people believe in. Um, I am super proud and don't make me cry now, but <laughs> I'm super proud that the like the best thing is people are starting to see our heart for service so they are donating our give 100 we raised our money for scholarships this year in about a month mm -hmm. um a month prior i think we had 2500 um dollars and in a month we got to 11500 just because people believe in the vision, what we're doing, and no, we're in a time where we all have to contribute. Um, right. We had people do legacy scholarships in honor of their parents and the Give 100, and people come and offer supports. Our workshops are led by industry leaders who offer their supports and their time free of charge. Um, so, you know, I envisioned it working. I didn't envision getting as much support. We're now at the point where we get in kind space and I could literally make phone calls and say, this is what I need. And people are open because they see the hard work associated with what we're trying to do. So that it's amazing. It gets me overwhelmed. <laughs> okay, don't cry. <laughs> I love it. Right, I'm not gonna cry. So you mentioned, um, the scholarship, the Give 100, the Legacy um, Scholarship, that is actually, it started out with, it's the Edna Lee Scholarship in honor of your, um, your late aunt. Um, how many students, because this scholarship fund is designed for um, um, 
incoming freshmen as well as continuing college students, right? Right. So how many students so far um, since the scholarship fund's inception have you been able to assist or provide financial assistance by awarding scholarships? So we have received hundreds of applications and we've awarded a total of 75 scholarships since 2016. That's great. Oh, so I am just elated that we are trying to help our youth who are trying to better themselves. Um, it's awesome, amazing, and it's allowing us an opportunity to change the narrative that we support our own as well as um, there are people back here cheering for your success. So get to those classes, make those grades, join those organizations, serve, and be great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and I think for some of them, I know last year, um, there was a young man who actually attends the University of Illinois at Chicago. And we were able, one of my colleagues, his department was able to match a scholarship. Um, so, I mean, when you have those type of opportunities, all because of this vision that you had, you know, to help students is wonderful. One thing you don't know is that same student was awarded the scholarship again this year and will get that matching scholarship again this year. Okay. So we're so excited for that, but more importantly, um, this particular student is a great example of how, what, when people serve you, you have to serve back. You have to give back. And one of the things the student um, has done was participate in our program at a maximum level. So he's able to get, he's gotten like three or four letters of recommendation because he talks to me. I check in on him. Um, he checks in on me. <laughs> and, um, if we do a TikTok video and I say I need 10 kids, he's like, I got you. If I say I need college students to go to Mercy Homes to serve their residents, he's there um, up front and center and leading the pack. Um, if I say um, in group me, I need a song for this video I'm doing, he always offers suggestions. He'll direct message me for questions. And one of the great things I was talking about um, picking my son up from school um, at the onset of the pandemic. And he said, oh, I work for Enterprise. I'm gonna give you my Enterprise discount. And I was like, now that's giving back. <laughs> and right. um, we had an opportunity when the students picked up their scholarships to meet his mom. And she was so grateful and thankful and offer her support. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to do is almost create this funnel of I give and you give back. We all give and together we have everything, right? Right, right. Now how can, um, so with Plans for Success, um, you start working with the children at what, the junior high, middle school level? Or so, it depends um, on the programming? We start freshman year of high school. Okay. There are some eighth graders who are very mature and we've allowed them to participate in some of the workshops. So we try to work with kids from 14 to 22 to cover that um, high school, college age level. But we do have a couple grad students that still works with our program. And then there are certain um, nonprofits who cater to younger kids and we share those resources and have sponsored younger kids as young as first grade to attend some of their events. So Nesby, we had, we paid for 30 kids to go to one of their events one year or expand your horizon. So as things come across, in order to have access to resources, you have to get to those services. Right. Speaking of that, um, same student who funnels his give and um, what he gives back, he had a situation where he had a group pay for his registration for a conference. And then someone paid for him to stay away in North Carolina 
and he needed a plane ticket to get there. One of our board members reached out to someone in her network and they offered him that plane ticket. So everybody working together, one person can't do it alone. Nikki Brookins, Plan for Success, we can't do it alone. You have to have everyone to make a difference and be more impactful. So how can um, people get involved um, with Plan for Success if they want to help in any way? Um, because it's so important to exercise, um, I, I was going to say servant leadership. I mean, because when I think of you, that's who you are as a servant leader. Um, but how can people get involved um, with Plan for Success? So you can start by going to our website. Um, and our website, who was just, it was just redesigned by one of our students. Um, you can go to the website, you can join one of our cohorts. You have the parent, the teen, the college, or the nonprofit. Um, besides that, you can email me or call me. You can volunteer, you can donate. And donate is not only monetary donations, you could donate an in-kind donation or your time and volunteer. What's the website? The website. It is <laughs> plan dash the number four success.org. Okay, perfect. Um, and then your email. And I know you guys are on social media too. So we want to make sure that people, if they want to like and follow the plan for success page, they can yes. you on Facebook. So our yep. So our tag is plan the number four success, the number two day. If you're going to email me at Gmail, if you're on Facebook, it's plan for success today, using the four and the two as numbers. Um, on Facebook, as well as Instagram, or Nikki Brookins, uh, I'm sorry, Nicole Brookins, on LinkedIn. And our, we also have a LinkedIn uh, profile for Plan for Success as well. Okay. That's in development. <laughs> okay. Now, um, you know, we, we're what, I don't know how many months into this pandemic because I think I've lost count at this point. <laughs> I know. But we're like more than six months in, I think. If that, yeah. We're about six months in at, um, into the pandemic. Right. And so many organizations, businesses, you know, we've all had to adjust um, in some way, shape, or form um, as a result of the pandemic. How has Plan for Success pivoted during the pandemic? Um, so one of the ways we initially transitioned, when the pandemic happened, it was right at the onset of us getting ready to have our conference. Um, so we took our one day conference and we separated it out into a webinar series and did um, the workshops on Saturdays for six to eight weeks. Now, during the pandemic, we had the murder of George Floyd, which added an additional component um, to the level of anxiety, the levels of um, Um, the need for us to be seen, mm -hmm. counted, and to matter. So one of the things we did to pivot in that space was we rescheduled one of the, the Game of Life webinar and we did a Let's Talk About It. It was narrated by one of our Community Image Award winners um, from last year, Jerome Reynolds, and he did an amazing job. And we had parents, we had teens, and we had college students in one conversation. And we all were able to just talk through our feelings. Uh, Jerome structured it perfectly where each um, person he would call, give, call on them and give them an opportunity for, to prepare their thoughts. And it was so amazing and just heartfelt because 
you never know how this affected in some instances you still don't know how it affects you mm -hmm. let alone your children or someone of a college age or teen age and to be able to hear from boys girls fathers mothers it was amazing um so we pivoted that way and then with our plan for success um with the Edna Lee Stewart scholarship we pivoted from just our regular um crowd forming crowdforming platform where we just sent out emails and people donated mm -hmm. actually making I wouldn't call them cold calls but just reaching out to our friends personally and as a result we had um, five to seven people give legacy scholarships in which you gave two well you and your brother gave two um, in honor of your dad and it's a way to honor them a way to um, push their legacy forward and doing something they did while they were here on earth and that was service to others. So thank you and grateful to you and all the other legacy winners, I mean legacy donors, um, much appreciated. Now you gotta make me cry. Okay, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and that scholarship is um, so important. It really is because, um, you know, when you think about, I mean, I don't know um, all that, you know, the work behind the scenes work that it entails to um, get folks to contribute or decide that they want to um, actually sponsor um, a legacy scholarship. But I knew for me, there was no question um, about whether or not I was going to contribute in that way. Um, primarily yeah. because I, I know the work that you're doing. You knew my dad, um, yeah. you know, and I also know how um, important education was to him and particularly of black men. Yes. So, um, you know, you're going to always have... Yes. my support our support um, thank you so thank you we definitely appreciate being able to contribute and making sure that um a young person who is trying to you know matriculate through college and get that degree making sure that we're able to assist in some way because it is Absolutely. definitely definitely hard you know um yeah trying yeah. to get through that um so, you know, I, with, you are a jack of all trades, I'm going to call you everything to everybody. I want to know, how do you balance motherhood, being a wife, being founder of a nonprofit, having a professional career? How do you balance all of everything? That? Yeah. Well, for me, um, it's not easy, but fortunately, um, I make my kids a part of what I do. So plan for success is an extension of what I do for my kids. Um, so it's kind of easy to transition things that I do because at, you know, during this time, from 2016 to today, they are high school and college students. Um, but, and they, they recently um, had a little small intervention with me telling me, um, you know, we've got the lessons. We kind of know you're not gonna hear our name in the streets of somebody saying we're doing anything bad. So you can kind of relax a little um and know that we're all good and for me that did a couple things one it gave me a freedom because with things like george ford my floyd my son jogs 
be real careful. My son, you know, is in these educational systems where black boys are not supposed to be successful. Or, you know, my daughter um, has challenges. So in these school systems, I volunteered like all the time mm -hmm. and get on school committees and commit to the school for my kids not for a name recognition or to say I'm the head of the this or the that. I'm strictly there to make the environment the best environment it could be for my kids and teach them along the way how this is gonna work. Nobody's gonna give you anything. You have to work hard. Um, and most importantly, you gotta seek answers. If there's a brick wall, you gotta figure out, am I gonna go up over it, around it, or through it? And um, I think everybody has the potential to volunteer or do anything. If, if you're a parent, I would suggest starting with where your kids are. My son played basketball, so I was a team mom. My um, you know, daughter, did a lot of everything. Everything that they did, I found ways, whether that was a, a word of encouragement, team mom, um, helping out the teacher or the, or the coach. Um, find ways to make the environment better or to ease some of the burden of the leader mm -hmm. was my goal. Yeah. Um, if you're single. You can get active in your black clubs and your neighborhoods. You can join a nonprofit as a volunteer or a board member. Um, if you're a student, if there's an organization that helps you, help them. Um, if there is um, any room to do something, I think service to others is the rent we pay to live on earth which was said by Muhammad Ali, but so true because we need your help. You can't, we're not in a time where you could just be a participant or an observer all the time. Take all of this all the time. You have to give something back, even to those parents who um, are empty nesters. It's not over now that your kid made it. Right help my kid make it or help the next kid make it or help your neighbor kid make it. So do something is Absolutely. the charge I would have. And, and you know, you're speaking um, to <laughs> what my philosophy is as right. well, as far as getting involved um, because it makes a difference, but not only does it make a difference for your own child, it's going to make a difference for somebody else. Um, right. someone else's child as well. Um, I've just yesterday, actually, there it was um, back to school. Well, it was a little different because, you know, we're doing the remote learning. But for my eighth grader, they had a uh, uh, meet the teacher night, but you were basically going there to pick up your books in a social distance okay. environment. But I have become, so I'm the parent that for well, I'm a pretty good parent, but other parents You're an excellent trust, parent. <laughs> but other parents and trust me with their children, right? So right. you know, so if they can't make it to a, a meeting or something like that, so I've become and I don't know if it's because my own children will be like, Oh, my mother can pick you up. Then I feel like I'm the Uber driver right. in the neighborhood. But right. I don't mind it because I would hope that if I need it that type of assistance someone would be there for me or i even have um another friend um who he is um he's a widower and he has a daughter who's in high school um same grade as my children well we you know our, our children go to the same school we get all of the different emails and that sort of thing but i know I'm, I'm the one who probably has like my email attached to the phone. And so I see the notifications popping up. And if it's something where we've got to complete a survey or if there's right, right. I'm on the phone or sending a message, Hey, make sure you check your email, you know, because I do recognize that everyone can't be as involved, 
Right. But like you said, there are still ways in which you can, you know, serve and serve. And that's a perfect example of how you serve others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just by sharing. You know, we can't hoard information for ourselves. As you mentioned, it was important to, um, one of the things that you notice about me is I share everything. When my son was on his way to college, Monday nights, I had uh, sessions with boys about scholarships. And I said, hey, I'm working on scholarships on Monday nights. If you all are interested, um, you need to come over. And this was at my dining room table. It wasn't a structured event. We gonna sit down, we gonna bring your laptops, we're gonna do it. And one student kept coming back, um, Zaid Walker, who was at Michigan State. And he had a very good portion of his tuition paid because he's a baseball player, um, a very good baseball player who will I remember probably that. be in the in MIT soon. Room. So, um, but he got four out of five scholarships that we applied for for him. and. It's just an example of my son was the same age as Zaid, and my son got scholarships. Zaid got scholarships. They got one scholarship that they both got, um, were awarded, but the one that there are scholarships Zaid was awarded that Christian didn't get and vice versa. But when you share with everyone, somebody is getting a scholarship. Right. So please share, share, share. And that's what we have to do. Like it can't be, we can't continue to operate where we're always competing. Absolutely. You know, I feel like that there's enough room for all of us to be able to, um, to, to be able to benefit, right? But we definitely have to work together. Um, Absolutely. So I know you did share how people can help, um, and give back and and help with plan for success, especially if there are folks who are experts in certain fields or arena, I'm sure that would be beneficial for different workshops and and that sort of thing. Absolutely. What are the plans for the upcoming year? So for the, if if we're talking about like in an academic year for the 2020, 2021 year, um, as far as, workshops or are there any events that we should be aware of that may be coming up? So basically what we're going to spend, so in doing the webinar series, school, school just started, right? Right. Um, for Chicago public schools. One of the things that we do, we service um, youth from all across Chicago. Um, our high school students attend 30 plus high schools across the Chicagoland area, as well as our college students attend 50 plus um, colleges and universities across the nation. So we had a successful webinar series um, in May, June, and July. Mm -hmm. We did our scholarship drive and we awarded our scholarships in August. I think it would be beneficial for our organization to take that time and check in, strengthen, and better organize our groups. So my cohorts is going to be spending personalized attention to them, providing care packages to our college students, mental health um, awareness, um, sharing up our LinkedIn pages and our resumes. So it's literally going into those networks, those cohorts, and making sure everybody is where they should be and organized and structured so that when we hit 2021, we have our annual bowling fundraiser for our conferences. Um, We'll do our conference, our one day conference, where we offer nine workshops and you get to pick three. And if you attend throughout high school, by the time you finish high school, you would have attended all of our webinars and ready for college and the things um, that we offer to support you during that time. Um, So it's going to be busy. 
So everything leads into one thing into the other until we get back through August where we'll do our scholarship awards again. And as far as the scholarship is concerned, because we don't have to wait until June or July to contribute. There's a way Absolutely. to contribute throughout the year to work towards the goal of awarding a scholarship for a student. Absolutely. So basically we have fundraisers like we did a successful Black Panther fundraiser for it. So sometimes we do movie fundraisers, fitness fundraisers, um, bowling fundraisers, just so that we can get families doing things together or us working together in a social fun environment. Mm -hmm. I've already set up our Give 100 campaign for 2021, and it is on our website that you can see. Um, we really do crowdfunding platform fundraisers. At the beginning of the year, we give 100, and the end of the year, we Planathon. So Planathon is coming up. Give 100 and Give Legacy solely supports our scholarships only is set up to just do everything for our scholarships. Our Planathon and all other fundraisers raise money for our programs and partnerships. So our conferences, our workshops, our um, supports that we provide, things that we do, care packages, et cetera, et cetera, um, as well as um, our partnerships and sending students to some of the other programs within other nonprofits. So again, that is on the website as well. Okay. Join well, the email list to stay tuned with all upcoming events, fundraisers, and information. Okay. Got to make sure we check that out. I want to know, so we're winding down okay. and, um, you know, what I, I'm sure some other people may want to know this, um, but what advice for those who are interested in perhaps starting a nonprofit where they're working, uh, where their focus is to work with youth, um, what advice can you share about getting started and remaining focused? Um, so to do this work, you have to have a passion for it. It's almost a calling because um, it's tough getting everybody together, getting people organized, raising funds, applying for grants. And if you don't get the grant, how do you still support your programs and partnerships and scholarships? Um, and you have to have a drive. Um, I always tell my kids, and it's something I follow myself, one, you have to try to do everything right the first time. So give it your best effort at the beginning. Hard work and preparation meets open doors. It gets you to that open door and you never know where you will receive support. Um, then two, you gotta do everything with a spirit of excellence. You can't half step it, you can't say, oh, this is good enough and we'll just, you know, do only a, por a partial or a portion of it um, because this is what we have on a limited budget. You'd be surprised that the things we've been able to do with such limited funds because that heart, that drive, that spirit of excellence is there. And then last, do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. So. Um, people meet your authenticity, um, your heart and your drive to help others. Um, if you're not real or you have intentions other than serving and benefiting others, do something else. Um, but if you want to start a nonprofit, I would suggest first volunteering for a nonprofit and definitely sitting on a board of directors directors for a nonprofit because you'll get a up close and personal view of how it actually works. Um, it's not something where you're gonna make a million dollars doing. So you have to really have 
that desire, heart, and drive to serve at the foundation. Um, and then, you know, I need help in a lot of different ways. So reaching out, calling me, I talk to people. I talk to people everywhere. <laughs> that was a gift I got from my mother where it doesn't matter where I can go in any room and pretty much talk to anybody. Um, I might get a little shy when I meet Michelle or Barack, but <laughs> it's, it's all good. So reach out to me. Um, I respond, I talk to people, and I welcome any and all help um, from anyone. Perfect. Do you have any closing remarks um, just in, in regards to um, the work that you, you've been involved in and um, I guess how it makes you feel? So how do you want, when people hear the name Nicole Brookins or Nikki Brookins, what's the first thing that you want people to think of? What's the lasting impression that you want to have on folks? So I'm going to say two things. I want to take a step back and say, first, thank you. There are so many people who drive me on days where I want to give up and say, oh, this is too hard. I can't do it. Then somebody sends me a $500 donation or somebody gives me a word of encouragement, which is hard sometimes when you're always the encourager, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, it, I just have to say thank you to people who see my passion and the need for help who have that heart to help. To um, partners, we have um, programs on the west side, the south side, and south suburbs. We've had community partners um, with UIC Chicago, with um, University of Chicago laboratory schools, and a lot of support from University of Chicago um, charter school um, with Todd Barnett. He is like, I could just praise his name and like, hey, Todd, um, you and your support with University of Chicago and the Legacy Scholarships are a lot. Give 100 people, everyone, um, just thank you um, is the first thing. When people hear my name, I want to hear people say, oh, Nikki Brookins, she's the that woman who helps people, who shares resources, who brings people together, who teaches us all how to participate, to learn how to take action and network, whether you're a parent, a teen, a college student, or another nonprofit organization. Um, together we have everything, and she taught me or help me see how to serve more. I think that's a perfect way to remember you and to think of you. And of course, to end this segment, I really appreciate you taking time out of your extremely busy schedule. Uh, Anything for you. <laughs> just to talk to us about Plan for Success. Um, you know, I'm one of your biggest fans. I love the organization because it's also my children have been able to attend workshops. And although sometimes we know our children can, you know, get a little frustrated with us, but whatever they are um, exposed to, it's going to make a difference. It may not, they may not realize it at the time. Absolutely. But, but it's absolutely. Cool. We plant seeds to grow later. Exactly, exactly. Every seed planted won't grow at the time. Right, right. Put in the soil. So right. all we have to do is just keep planting those seeds for right. all of us. That's right. And we'll all grow together, right? Right. Well, I just want to encourage you to continue to do what you're doing, um, continue mm -hmm. to help our youth um, because they certainly um, – need the wealth of information um, and exposure to the resources that Plan for Success 
um, has been able to um, offer them. So I thank you um, and the entire, the board members of Plan for Success as well for the work that you do. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining uh, me today for this episode of Light It Up. And for my listeners and viewers, make sure that you tune in next week for perhaps we'll have another interesting guest. But in the meantime and in between time, don't forget to continue to light it up and shine bright like a diamond. Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.